Chapter 25 Danielle felt a wave of panic sweep over her. What can I do? What? Run back? Hide behind something in the storage area? No, I'll be trapped. Cornered. She turned back to Billy. Anger quickly replaced her fear. He can't stop me. I won't let him. Danielle. No. With a roar, Danielle charged at Billy. He stretched his hands out, ready to grab her. She crashed into him at full speed. He grabbed her arm. The fingers tightened, dug in. No! Danielle swung her fist at him, slamming it into the side of his head. Billy gasped, his fingers loosened. With a wild cry, Danielle wrenched her arm free, shoved him away, and raced for the stairs. Halfway down, one of her sandals caught on a metal rung of the staircase. Danielle screamed and fought to keep her balance. The scream echoed in the vast warehouse. Danielle! she heard Caroline cry. Look out! You're going to fall! Danielle kicked off the loose sandal, stepped out of the other one. Behind her, heavy footsteps rang out. Billy came racing after her. Danielle dived down the stairs. Get out, she urged herself. Run away, as far away as you can. She jumped over the last three steps, staggered, and caught her balance. Then she lowered her head and plunged toward the door. She caught a glimpse of Kit's alarmed face and Shauna's. She heard Caroline and Mary Beth call her name. She didn't stop. Hands out in front of her. Hands out in front of her. Danielle slammed into the bar on the door and burst outside. Her car was blocked. She couldn't use it anyway. No keys. Danielle veered away from the cars, her bare feet slapping against the pavement. Through the parking lot, into the street. Horns blared at her. Brakes squealed. Drivers shouted. Danielle ignored them. Above the shouting and honking, she heard voices behind her. She's getting away! Stop her! Faster, Danielle, she urged herself. Faster! A full moon hung in the dark sky like a gleaming ball of ice. Danielle felt a light wash over her head and arms. Cold. Dangerous. She ran harder. Heart pumping, she leaped across the sidewalk and plunged into a dark wooded area. The voices behind her faded. Danielle kept running. Pine needles pricked her feet. Branches whipped her arms and face and snagged at her hair. Her side ached and the soles of her feet felt raw from running on the pavement. She slowed down, but she didn't stop. She didn't dare stop. A vine tangled in her hair, and Danielle hesitated. She heard a sound ahead of her. She stopped, listened hard. Rippling water. The river flowed to her left. She knew these woods. She could cut through them and come out near her house. Gasping with relief, Danielle felt a surge of new energy. She ripped the vine from her hair and started running again. Batting branches out of her way, she spotted a glimmer of moonlight up ahead through the thick trees. Almost out of the woods, she told herself. She turned. No one behind her. Home, she thought. Got to get home. It was two or three miles on the other side of the woods. But she could make it now. She knew she could. Billy knows where I live, she remembered. Will he be waiting there for me? Is that why he didn't chase after me into the woods? She couldn't think about that now. She just had to get home. A rustling noise off to her right made her heart jump. She paused, listening, peering into the thick darkness. Silence. A squirrel or a raccoon, she told herself. Keep running. Danielle reached the edge of the woods. She broke through the final barrier of branches and felt soft, cool dirt under her feet. Which way is home? Before she could decide, a figure crashed out of the woods and grabbed her arm. Danielle let out a shriek of startled horror. Danielle, it's okay, it's me! Caroline! Danielle sighed in relief. Help me, Caroline, she cried. You've got to help me, or he'll kill me! Scratched and exhausted, Danielle flung herself at Caroline. I, I can't run any farther. Help me, Caroline, please! He'll kill me! He'll kill me, too! Caroline wrapped her arms around Danielle and held her tight. Come on, Danny. Of course I'll help you, she murmured softly. I've got to get home, Danielle choked out. He, he might hurt Aunt Margaret or Cliff. You'll be okay. Catch your breath, Caroline urged her. I'll help you get home. Danielle rested her head on Caroline's shoulder. Gradually, her breathing slowed. She stopped trembling. Moonlight poured down on them. Danielle shivered. Let's go, she said. Let's get out of here. Catch your breath, Caroline repeated. Her voice sounded different, low and hoarse. No, come on. Hurry, Danielle pleaded. We can't waste time. Caroline didn't respond this time. Her hands felt heavy on Danielle's back. Danielle heard a low, rumbling sound from deep in Caroline's chest. Are you okay? Danielle asked. What's that smell? Danielle wondered. She sniffed the air. It smelled sour, like a dog that hadn't been bathed in years. Danielle shivered. Caroline? She whispered. She spun around and gasped. No, no, it can't be. Caroline's blue eyes gleamed out at Danielle from a face covered in gray fur. The same bristly gray fur had sprouted over Caroline's arms and legs. Another rumbling sound rose up from Caroline's chest. 
and then her thick purple lips drew back, revealing sharp yellow fangs, fangs that glistened with saliva, fangs that were meant to tear it into flesh and rip it apart. As the cold moonlight poured down, Caroline tossed back her ugly, fur-covered head and let out a long animal howl. Chapter 26 The long, wailing cry shattered the quiet of the night. It ended in an ugly animal growl. Caroline's eyes rolled wildly, catching the silver light of the moon. Thick saliva dripped onto the fur over her chin. Her purple lips drew back again. Caroline! Danielle cried. You know me. I'm your friend. Please, Caroline! Caroline raised her fur-covered hands. The yellow nails had grown long and curled into ragged claws, claws that could rip and tear. Another inhuman growl started again, deep in Caroline's throat. She grabbed Danielle roughly with both claws. Caroline! Danielle shrieked. It's me! It's Danielle! Caroline, please! The blue eyes were all that remained of Caroline. The rest of her had transformed into a grunting, drooling creature. A wolf? A werewolf? Choked with terror, Danielle struggled to pull away, but Caroline held on to her with inhuman strength. Then, over Caroline's shoulder, Danielle glimpsed two lights in the distance. Headlights, she thought, a car. Somebody to help me. Danielle shrieked out as loudly as she could. Help! Over here! Help! An engine roared. The headlights loomed closer. Caroline uttered an angry snarl and snapped her head around. Her grip loosened. Danielle tore free and sprinted toward the bouncing headlights. Hey! she shouted, waving her arms above her head. Over here! Help! The lights blinded her for a moment. Then they swung away, and she could see the car. Not a car. A van. The band's van with Billy and Mary Beth inside. The van squealed to a halt. Mary Beth and Billy leaped out and sprinted toward Danielle. No! Go back! she cried. Go back! We've got to get out of here! Billy and Mary Beth didn't seem to hear her. As they left the shadows of the trees, the icy moonlight washed over them. Their faces writhed. Their eyes glittered in the light and their lips twisted back, revealing sharp, pointed fangs. Danielle gaped in horror as fur sprouted on their faces, their arms, their hands. Werewolves, Danielle realized. Billy, Mary Beth, Caroline, they're all werewolves. Danielle screamed again and whipped around. Caroline loped toward her on all fours, a thick saliva running from her snarling jaws. Behind her, Billy and Mary Beth tilted back their wolfish heads and uttered shrill howls. Nowhere to run, Danielle thought, her heart pounding, the blood throbbing at her temples. Get away, she screamed. Please, please, get away from me. The three wolves moved in front of her, blocking her escape. Backing her up, snarling and growling, the sickening sour smell rose up in front of her. The wolves snapped their jaws, pushed forward, backing her up, backing her up, until cold water splashed around her ankles. Danielle cried out. They had backed her into the narrow river. What did they plan to do? Drown her? Then tear her to pieces? Tear her to pieces like Joey? Like Dee? Her foot came down on the smooth, slippery rock. She fell. Cold water swirled over her legs. Whimpering in fear, Danielle scrambled to her feet. She glanced up at the van, not that far away. Could she get to it before the three wolves attacked her? Could she beat them to it? She had to. Sucking in a deep breath, Danielle plunged out of the water. Stumbling and slipping, she cut across the wet dirt. Behind her, the snarling stopped. She glanced back. They weren't chasing her. Had they given up? She struggled to see. But a heavy curtain of darkness had fallen over the woods. A large cloud covered the moon. Danny? She heard Caroline call. It's okay now. You don't have to run from us. Caroline's voice had returned to normal. She's right, Danielle, Mary Beth shouted. You're safe now, Billy added. We won't hurt you. Danielle hesitated. She wanted to trust them, but she knew she couldn't. The moonlight had transformed them into wolves. The bad moonlight. It had vanished behind the cloud, and they had returned to their human bodies. But the minute the cloud passed, Danielle knew they turned into wolves once again and tear her apart. No! she screamed. And then a voice rang out from behind her. Danielle! She recognized the voice. Relief washed over her. Kit! Kit! she cried. She plunged through the dirt towards his voice. Help me! Hurry, Danielle, Kit shouted, holding out his hand. I have my car. Hurry. The van is closer, she cried breathlessly. I don't have the key. Come on, Danielle. Hurry. Danielle tried to run, but her legs suddenly gave way. Her muscles cramped. She couldn't move. Help me, Kit! Danielle, don't go to him, she heard Billy shout. He won't save you. Kit is one of us. Danielle froze, unable to move unable to breathe. Nice try, Billy. Kit's voice sounded tight with anger. Don't listen, Danielle. He's lying. Billy is lying to you. 
Kit won't save you, Billy repeated desperately. Come to us, Danielle. In her panic, Danielle turned from Billy to the others, then back to Billy. Billy's the band leader, and he's their leader, Danielle, Kit cried. Come to me, and I'll get you out of here. Kit inched toward her, still holding his hand out. Come on, Danielle, he urged. Billy advanced on her. Caroline and Mary Beth moved beside him, urging her to come to them. What should I do? Danielle asked herself. Who can I trust? Who? Chapter 27 Trust me, Danielle, Kit whispered. Trust him? Billy barked out a sarcastic laugh. We're your friends, Danielle. Come to us, please. Breathing hard, Danielle glanced from one to the other. Billy and Kit glared at each other furiously. Choose, Danielle ordered herself. You have to choose. She glanced at Caroline and Mary Beth. They nervously watched the sky. They're waiting for the cloud to pass by, Danielle thought. Waiting for the moonlight to return and transform them into wolves again, so they can tear me to pieces. Kit, she cried. She spun away from them and raced toward Kit. He grabbed her hand. Let's get out of here. The cloud is rolling away. She and Kit lurched toward the woods. Danielle felt a surge of hope. We're going to make it! As they ran, the trees appeared to light up. It's the moonlight, Danielle realized. The moonlight is back. I can feel its cold light on my shoulders. Don't look back, Kit ordered. Danielle heard a long animal howl close behind her. She stumbled again, almost pulling Kit down. He grabbed her around the waist and lifted her to her feet. Ah! The wolf roar startled Danielle. She turned away in time to see Billy leap onto Kit's back. Roaring and snapping his powerful jaws, Billy drove Kit to the ground. Run, Danielle, Kit gasped hoarsely. Get away while you can. Billy grunted and snarled as he and Kit rolled over and over in the dirt. Kit fought hard, but he was no match for the powerful wolf. Danielle's gaze snapped back to Mary Beth and Caroline. They crept closer to her on all fours. I've got to save Kit, Danielle thought frantically. But I can't fight all three of them. I have to get help. Have to get to the van. Kit and Billy groaned and grunted, wrestling in the dirt. The other two wolves advanced on Danielle. She bent low, scooped up a handful of wet mud. The two wolves growled, thick saliva dripping from their open mouths. Danielle sprang up, heaved the mud at their eyes, and took off for the van. The van was angled sideways toward the woods. The driver's door had been left open. A glint of metal caught her eye. The key! The key dangled in the ignition. With a cry, Danielle dived into the driver's seat pulled the door shut, and slammed down the lock. Snarling angrily, Caroline and Mary Beth flung themselves against the side of the van, rocking it violently. Danielle grabbed the key, turned it. The engine groaned, started to catch, and died. Chapter 28 The headlights beamed toward the trees. Was the battery dead? Trembling in fear, Danielle clicked the lights off and grabbed hold of the key again. Mary Beth and Caroline hurled themselves at the van again, rocking it under their weight. Danielle's hand, slick with sweat, slipped off the key. Mary Beth's wild-eyed wolf face pressed hard against the driver's window. Her claws scrabbled at the glass. Danielle turned the key. The engine groaned. She stopped, pumped the gas, and turned the key again. At last, the engine roared to life. Danielle shifted into reverse and stomped on the gas. The tire spun in the wet dirt. Go! Danielle yelled. The van jerked backward. Yes! Mary Beth clung to the side mirror. Danielle hit the brake and shifted, then hit the gas. As the van jumped forward, Mary Beth toppled off, all four fur-covered paws flailing wildly. In the rearview mirror, Danielle watched the two wolves chasing after the van on all fours, snarling and snapping. She jammed the pedal to the floor and screamed with relief as the van shot forward, leaving the animals behind. I made it! Danielle cried aloud. But what about Kit? Please, Kit. Please, find a way to stay alive till I get back. Guiding the van over the bumpy wooden bridge that led to the street, Danielle took a deep breath and tried to think clearly. Billy is the leader. Does that mean he killed Joey and Dee? Why? She suddenly remembered the animal howls she had heard from her hotel window. Wolf howls, my so-called friends, howling at the moon. Danielle remembered her own fingernails lengthening and curling into claws. She remembered lapping up Cliff's blood, her furious desire to kill Dee. Were they trying to turn me into a werewolf, too? She asked herself with a shudder. But it didn't work, she assured herself. I'm still me. I'm not a wolf. It didn't work. Don't think anymore, Danielle instructed herself as the van rocketed down Fear Street, her street. Just get help. Danielle glanced nervously into the rearview mirror. Nothing but darkness. No one following. Her breath caught in her throat. 
Would she be too late? Would the police find Kit's body, slashed and torn like the others? Hang on, Kit, she murmured. At last, her house came into view. Danielle shoved the driver's door open even before the van bumped onto the curb. The breath rasped in her throat as she raced up the sidewalk. She stumbled on the wooden front steps, a splinter cut into the palm of her hand. She ignored the pain and scrambled up. The front door was locked. Aunt Margaret, she cried, pounding with her fist. Aunt Margaret, open the door. Hurry! Silence. She pounded again, harder this time. Aunt Margaret, it's me, Danielle. Hurry and open the door! Off in the distance, an animal howled. A dog or a wolf? Aunt Margaret, Cliff! She hammered at the door. Hurry! She started to run around to the back when she heard footsteps in the front hall. The porch light snapped on and the lock clicked. The door swung open. Danielle burst inside and fell against her aunt. Aunt Margaret wore a light blue summer robe. Her red hair stuck up in spikes and her eyes were pouchy from sleep. Danielle, what's wrong? she demanded. Danielle raised her head. There isn't time to explain. Quick, we have to call the police. She started toward the kitchen, but her aunt kept hold of her arm. Call the police? Aunt Margaret asked. Why? Did something happen at the concert? You look as if you've been in a fight, Danielle. I have. And you're hurt, Aunt Margaret continued. Come with me to the bathroom. Let's clean those cuts and scratches. No, Danielle cried frantically. I'm fine. It's Kit who needs help. They're going to kill him. Huh? Kill who? Danielle, calm down and tell me. Billy! And Mary Beth and Caroline, Danielle gasped out. They're all werewolves. Aunt Margaret's eyes grew wide. They tried to kill me too, but I got away. But they've got Kit, and they're going to kill him. Tugging her arm loose, Danielle ran down the hall and into the dark kitchen. She knocked into a kitchen chair, flung it aside, and grabbed the telephone. The kitchen light flashed on. Danielle, Aunt Margaret said firmly. Danielle ignored her. She knew her aunt didn't believe her wild story. She'd make her believe later. She started to punch 911. Aunt Margaret reached out and broke the connection. What are you doing? Danielle shouted. Aunt Margaret, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. They're werewolves and they're trying to kill Kit. Right now! Desperately, Danielle tried to peel her aunt's fingers from the phone. Why are you doing this? Don't you believe me? Do you think I'm crazy? Aunt Margaret shook her head. No, dear. I don't think you're crazy at all. In fact, I know you're not. Then why? I'm sorry, Danielle, but you can't call the police. I can't let you. A strange smile spread over Aunt Margaret's face. You have to go back to the others, dear. We've all worked too hard. You can't spoil our plans for you now. Chapter 29 I didn't hear right, Danielle told herself. Aunt Margaret didn't say that. But what did she say? Gently, Aunt Margaret took the phone from Danielle's hand and hung it up. You must go back to them, Danielle, Aunt Margaret repeated. They won't let you escape. They'll kill you first. No, Danielle thought. She can't be saying that. This is one of my fantasies. If I just wait, it'll be over. She felt Aunt Margaret's arm on her shoulder. She stiffened. Danielle! Aunt Margaret sounded hurt. Don't be afraid of me. Come sit at the table and let me fix you some tea. Danielle shook her head and shrugged her aunt's hand off her shoulder. I have to get help for Kit! Aunt Margaret sighed. You can't, dear. Please listen to me. I can't let you ruin our plan, Danielle. We've all been working on it for so long. Danielle gazed around the kitchen. The clock ticked. The refrigerator hummed. The plants swayed gently in the breeze from the window. Face it. Everything is all real, Danielle told herself. It's all really happening. And, and, Aunt Margaret is one of them. Her eyes moved back to her aunt's face. She swallowed. You're my aunt, she whispered hoarsely. How could you help them? Aunt Margaret slowly shook her head. I'm not your aunt, Danielle. Huh? What do you mean? Danielle shrieked. I've known you all my life. Of course you're my aunt. You hadn't seen your real aunt since you were a tiny child, Aunt Margaret reminded her. But, but, Danielle sputtered. I took her place, the woman revealed. But what happened to my real aunt, Danielle demanded. The woman brushed back her red hair and sighed again. You don't have to know that, Danielle. The less you know, the easier it'll be for you to... Tell me, Danielle demanded. Your real aunt is dead, Aunt Margaret replied bluntly, just like your parents. All three of them died the same way. What are you talking about? My aunt wasn't with Mom and Dad when they had that car accident. No, of course she wasn't, Aunt Margaret agreed. But they got her, the same way they got your parents. The same way they got... Danielle stopped, horrified. The newspaper story. Her parents had been torn to pieces by unknown animals. No wonder she couldn't stop thinking about them. Somehow, all along, she'd known that the accident story was a lie. 
and the same animals that killed her parents killed her aunt. Werewolves. The werewolves had killed them. Aunt Margaret continued her explanation. It was all part of the plan, she told Danielle. They had to get your relatives out of the way, so I could care for you, so I could get you ready. Ready for what? Ready for your husband. Aunt Margaret leaned close to Danielle. Her steely blue eyes gleamed with excitement. You fought it hard, but you can't win, she whispered. You'll never win. And you're almost ready. Almost ready to become his bride. Whose bride? Danielle cried. What are you talking about? A werewolf's bride. Aunt Margaret smiled triumphantly. Our master. He needs a wife, Danielle, and he chose you. Billy, Danielle thought as a chill of horror swept down her body. They expect me to marry that creature? Danielle crept backward, but Aunt Margaret shot out a hand and grabbed her tightly around the arm. She was a small woman, but her grip was powerful. Let go of me, Danielle demanded. I won't be part of your sick plan. Let go of me. It's too late, Aunt Margaret whispered. Years too late. Danielle glanced around the room. How can I get out of here? How can I escape from her? Don't try anything, Aunt Margaret warned. It's useless, Danielle. I won't let you go. I won't let you spoil everything. Danielle jerked her arm violently. Stop it. Aunt Margaret insisted sharply. You're just making it harder on yourself. Hey, what's going on? A shrill voice demanded. Cliff! Danielle cried. Her little brother stood in the kitchen doorway in his Power Rangers pajamas, blinking at them sleepily. What's happening? Cliff asked with a huge yawn. I heard all this shouting and stuff. It's nothing, Cliff, Aunt Margaret told him quickly. Go back to bed. Cliff eyed them suspiciously. You guys having a fight or something? No, Aunt Margaret snapped. Now, go back to bed. Cliff frowned. Okay, okay, all I asked was... Listen to me, Cliff, Danielle interrupted quickly. Run upstairs and call the police. Call 911. The police? Cliff's eyes widened. Hey, were we robbed or something? Aunt Margaret laughed harshly. Your sister is trying to trick you, Cliff. You know how she likes to tease. No, Danielle shouted. This isn't a joke, Cliff. Please, get the police. Cliff hesitated. His gaze moved back and forth between his aunt and his sister. Cliff. Do as I say and get back to bed, Aunt Margaret ordered. She moved toward him and her grip on Danielle's arm loosened. With a cry, Danielle pulled free and shoved the woman away. The woman staggered, crashed into Cliff, and the two of them fell to the floor. Ignoring their cries, Danielle dived to the back door, twisted the lock, and yanked it open. Billy stood outside. His eyes burned angrily into hers. Where do you think you're going? he asked. 